<laughs> Welcome back to Qtronics, where I have all the gear and no idea. Today, to finally finish off all of those mod chips, I'm going to be modding a V2. And yes, I know I said finally, and it's a V2. I'm not going to be modding a V1. There's no point. They're so similar, it's irrelevant. So, anyway, let's get into this V2. I'll catch you here again in a second when it's all open. See you in a sec. Right then, I've disconnected the battery and I've taken all the back shielding off. Right, let's just take off the MMC and also the CPU shield. Because this is a V1 and we only have two points to solder, just literally the CPU ribbon, that's all we have to solder. We can leave it in the shell, just be very careful of the screen, put something underneath it when you're using the scope or whatnot. Right, let's get that MMC off, let's get that MMC off and let's go. So the MMC is actually connected to the shield for the Wi-Fi module, I believe, on these. So if we literally pop this up here, Just to loosen it off, there we go. And then we should be able to get the MMC off then. Nice and easy. I mean, that popped off a bit harder than I wanted it to, but there we go, MMC is off. Right then, we're gonna to need to take this off the shielding. Best way i found to do that is to put a little bit of IPA into the gap so it breaks down the glue. So let's do that. And then just wanna get your fingers in there and just pry it apart, be really gentle because we don't want to dislodge the MMC. It's, it's a BGA chip, so obviously if we, uh, if we make any of the balls come loose, we're going to be in a world of pain, because then we're going to have to start reballing MMC chips, and it's not something I want to do on a really simple install. This is, the, uh, this is by far the easiest one. I have installed one into a V1 recently, and I think the V2 is just easier, purely down to where the CPU caps are. So I think with the V1, they're vertical rather than horizontal. And it for me, it just makes it a bit harder to solder onto them. There's a bit less room. So yeah, if you were... To be honest, I just wouldn't bother modding a V1 anymore. The CPU in a V2 and higher is just better. So it feels like a bit of a waste of time to do a V1. So you want to be nice and careful. You will bend the shield a little bit, but... It'll bend itself back into place, no problem. Right, there we go. Then we can just put that to one side and let's get on to getting the heat shield open. So first things first, let's clean up the thermal paste. Right then, let's get that heat shield open. Right, be very careful when opening these heat shields as you don't want to risk damaging the board. So I'll use a needle or some really fine tipped pliers and just you just want to pop open these little, they're almost like little little clips, I guess, is the best, is the best word for them. And once you get a few of them undone, the rest will just pop open. <clears throat> there you go. Once you've got so many off, all good. Right then, let's clean that thermal paste off. Right then, a little bit of IPA and a toothbrush. We're very gentle, we don't want to knock any of these caps off. You will see in a future video that I actually replace some caps on a, on a system, so I, I can do that now, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. Makes the job quicker if I don't have to start getting the heat gun out and replacing caps. So, just clean this up so we can get a nice contact on these. Right then, as you can see, we're under the scope now. And my camera is, my scope is actually slightly wonky. It's not your eyes, guys. So let me readjust that a little bit. There we go. Right then, as you can see, we've still got a little bit of gunk on there, so I'm just going to give it another clean with a bit of IPA, and we'll go from there. Just going to unplug this uh, this fan, just because the wire is very close to where I need to mount the CPU. Okay, we can move that wire over here then. 
it out of the way. Right then, on to the CPU. So just like any other installation, we drop this down and we want to come over on top of these two caps here. So let's get some flux. I'm just bending this wire back a little bit just because it wasn't it wasn't sitting flat for me. So just make sure this sits nice and flat. Right, some people like to tin these before they do it. I'm not a, I don't know, I always find that tinning them just makes them harder to sit down. Right, let's get the big tip soldering iron out and we'll uh, we'll get this mounted. I'm going to double check those. This cap here isn't bridged. No, it's not. We're good. Okay, then let's get the diode mode. Let's get the multimeter out and test in diode mode. So we want to put our black one on ground. And the left side should be zero or as close to zero as possible. And then the right side should be between 10 and 15. Sorry, I'm in diode mode here. Ignore me. We need to be in ohms mode. There we go. Right, let's try that again. I did think that was looking a bit weird. Right, so the left side should be as close to zero as possible. So I'm getting a two ohm reading there, which isn't good. Let's just double check. Okay, and then this side should be 14 to 15. That's great. And 13. And that's, that's perfect, 0 0.2. So let me just double check this left side. We may have to solder this again. Right, I'm going to redo that point, so I'm just not happy with it. So let's do that. There we go, that's ground now. That's just my wires. So let's measure the other side again. So this side should also be ground. And as you can see, 0 0.3. That's my that's my wires basically. Okay, let's just double check the other points while we're here. We might as well. Thirteen point eight. Thirteen point six. Perfect. Right then, let's just dry it all off and put the scope away, and that's it. We're done with the scope. Right. So the next bit is. A bit of captain tape over here. I actually had someone come back recently where they'd had issues where the heat shield was actually touching this. So we put a little bit of captain tape over it. We never have to worry about that. I do have some thinner captain tape, just bear with me. Marion, don't look at it. Shut your eyes, Marion, don't look at it no matter what happens. Right then, there we go, a little bit of captain tape. It's probably a little bit too big, I'm just going to shave a little bit off it. We don't want any of the captain tape touching the die, as we want the heat transfer to go straight through. We don't want to make the, uh, the CPU overheat. So just a little bit on there, just to secure that, just to uh, protect that from any shorts, look. All right, that's a good one. Then... We can now get it to the point of testing. 
So with the MMC, we have the Pico Fly ribbon. All we do is plug the MMC into it. Like so. And then this attaches to the CPU ribbon. Like so, and then this just attaches back to where the MMC was originally. So line it up and clip it in. There we go. Now just for a quick test, we should be able to just hold it and test it. Actually, before that, I'm going to put some cap and tape underneath it as we don't want it to short against the board. We'd be, do, we'd be putting cap and tape on this anyway after we finish, so we might as well do it now. Right then, and now we should be able to pop in the battery and give it a quick test. So, a moment of truth. Let's see if we get some lights down here. So, we're getting some lights. Blue, blue. Blue. Are we going to get a green? And there we go, green. And we're all flashed. Right, I'll turn this off and we'll get it reassembled. A safe workplace is a happy workplace. First things first, let's disconnect that battery. We don't want to mess in with anything while the battery's in. Now, when it comes to the MMC shield, this clip here, if you can see it, this just needs bending in. So if you literally just bend from here to here, there's a little, there's a noticeable notch. That will be enough. That's all you need to do, just so we don't cut the wire. We'll clean off the bit of thermal paste on here as well. And we're going to apply some new one. Right then, Ben's favourite part. A jizzle of thermal paste. Well, it's beginning to grow on me. There we go. Heat shield back on. If you've bent any of the clips, here's where you just make sure the clips are all sitting back in properly. There we go. And that's that. And we're back on. Right, now it comes to the fun part. I like to personally wrap this whole thing in captain tape, purely because we have to cut the heat shield to make this work. So let's get that wrapped in. There we go. Let's plug this speaker back in that we took out. Which always proves more difficult than you think it will. Right then, it's that time again. Another jizzle of thermal paste. That's right Ben, another jizzle. I'm just going to clean this heat shield off over here though. Not the heat shield, the uh... I can't remember the name of it. Let me think. Heat sink, there we go. Let's get that screwed down. So the captain tape stops this touching this. It stops the heat sink getting into any contact with the MMC and causing any shorts, which is good. Right 
Right then, that's that. And now the final part, which involves cutting the heat shield. So first of all, let's get it cleaned off. Right then, so the way this works is, the heat shield sits about here. And I've found that if you cut it just shy of the fan hole here, and just on top of this ridge here, that's perfect. So let me zoom out and I'll cut that for you now. And that should give you all the clearance you need. Perfect. Right then, for the last time today, I'm gonna get a real good zoom in on it. A jizzle of thermal paste. I... I quit! I quit! <laughs> I quit! <laughs> and there we go. I'm all jizzled out now. Right then, let's just pop that heat shield on, make sure it looks like it's gonna fit. It does. Right, I'm gonna get this all screwed back down, guys, and I'll meet you back at the end, and we'll show you it booting atmosphere. Right, catch you in a sec. Right then, guys, we're all fully reassembled, all back together. So I've put a memory card in, I've got a default booter for Techie. So let's just see it boot up. And there we go. Straight into Techie. Perfect. Anyway guys, thank you once more for joining me. Hopefully you got something out of the V2 install. It's quite an easy install, so anyone out there know that needs to do theirs. There you go, that's to look at it. This part is probably the most difficult, it's cutting your heat shields. I don't like cutting things, so I hate it. But um, if you've enjoyed that guys, please like and subscribe as it helps my channel to grow and it tells me what content you want in the future. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this install and I'll catch you next time. See ya.